So Anthony Rizzo's hurt, and the Yankees' trade deadline needs could not be more obvious. Hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Happy belated Father's Day to all the dads again. So there's a couple things here, okay? Anthony Rizzo's hurt. For those that haven't heard, he collided yesterday in first. And he's, getting, he's had some freak injuries, mostly due to collisions and not really – He's not really injury prone. It's just happening to Anthony Rizzo. So, but he hurt his wrist yesterday. And he's going for imaging today. We'll have more intel later on once we get some results. So if you want to know and you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, okay? Again, hit the notifications too. That way, when news does come out, you'll get it. You'll be at the front of the line too. When I go live at any point in time, you'll know when I do that too. And I'm interviewing a former major league uh, player tomorrow. So that'll be a lot of fun. So and I, your support is greatly appreciated one way or the other. I thank you so much for it. Now, Anthony Rizzo, you know, DJ LeMahieu, Glaber Torres. We have three big holes in the infield right now. We do. Okay. Did we think that was going to be that way? No. But it just so happened to be that way. Okay. And I know some people like to blame Aaron Boone for that, which is a waste of time. Um this just happens to all teams. You know, like the Dodgers, Yoshinobi Yamamoto's hurt now. He's in the IL. Mookie Betts is going to miss months. He has a broken wrist. Are we blaming Dave Roberts for that? No. Guys just get hurt, right? Or guys don't produce. It happens. So, but back to the Yankees. What do we do? And we'll focus one guy. We'll go to one guy at a time. Anthony Rizzo. In-house or out of the house? In-house, you've got a couple guys. You've got Ben Rice and Augustin Ramirez, but these guys are converted catchers. We're getting refs at first base. They're tearing the cover off the ball. Okay. You also have TJ Rumfield, who is a more of a natural first baseman like Rizzo is. Okay. He's also six foot five, 225 pounds, a big boy. He hits from the lefty side. And he's batting 305 and triple A, five homers, 34 ribbies, three stolen bases, and OPS of 811. So, and he's, he's a pretty solid first baseman too. So, that could be a guy that Anthony Rizzo could mentor. I would be fine with those other guys too, but I think DJ TJ Runfield represents probably the most logical choice. And maybe one of those other guys can be packaged in a trade, okay, to address another need that we might have. And we need other we need to address third base, we need to address second base. Okay. Now let's move on to second base. Okay, now obviously we'll get back to first base really quickly. I mean, I'm not for trading for Pete Alonso or I don't really need Josh Bell either. Um, and which to me the most logical move is to go in-house here and let Rizzo mentor one of these young kids. I couldn't think of a better Rizzo, uh, a mentor than Anthony Rizzo. So now let's move to second base, Glaber Torres. <laughs> Another frustrating scenario here. And he's not an older player like Rizzo or DJ is, but he's almost sabotaging his ability to get an extension or a qualifying offer or anything. So, um, and his defense is crushing his ability to be <laughs> liked. Right, and ability to continue to produce offensively too. So there are in-house options here as well. You've got guys like Yorbit Vivas, you've got guys like Oswald Peraza, but the problem is neither one of them is hitting. You've got Jared Cerno, but he's further down. You've got Caleb Durbin, who's at Triple A, who represents a good stolen base threat, who is hitting. He could be a guy that the Yankees could bring up too. Or there's another name that's presented presented himself in the last day or so. This is Edward Julian. He's a second baseman from the Minnesota Twins, a Canadian ball player. He bats lefty. He's 25 years old. He's not a free agent until 2030. So, and he doesn't come with the defensive frustrations that Glover Torres does. So, you can replace him in-house. You can try to bring in somebody. And the fact is, no matter what happens at the major level, I don't think Glaber Torres is going to be the one to get traded for any one of these guys. He's not going to be part of a trade for Julian. I, I don't think he has any trade value. I think the best we can do maybe is international prospect money. I think they could pull that off. The Yankees were able to trade Billy McKinney for international prospect money. So I think they can move towards a prospect money. And then pack your picture other guys. Maybe an August Ramirez or Ben Rice over to the Twins in a trade for that second baseman. Okay, There's other guys like Jazz Chisholm, Nolan Gorman that could be available as well. Price tag might, might be a little higher. But this guy's got five controllable years. Okay, Six controllable years, actually. All three pre-arb and all three arb years. So it will cost a fair amount, but at the, very, at the very least, headlining with a Ben Rice or an Augustin Ramirez could be an, an, 
an attractive way to start a prospect package. But you let me know what your thoughts are either way. Those are the three guys at the major league level. Again, Jazz Chisholm, Nolan Gorman, and Edward Julian. So now let's move over to third base. DJ Oswaldo Cabrera. We're not even getting in what we need out as well. Oswaldo Cabrera. He started he started strong, okay, but he's kind of come back to earth as well. Okay, and that 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 enamored feeling that a lot of folks had for him doesn't seem to be lingering around anymore. And again, would I be opposed to them playing him every day at third base? No. But if we're gonna compete with other teams like the Orioles, like the Dodgers, like the Phillies, or whoever else in the playoffs. We're going to need to upgrade and productive on the offense. We have a third of the lineup right now that's not producing at all, and sometimes more than that. Okay, that can happen at a high level if you want to run and make a deep playoff run. It can't. The Orioles lineup is deep. Dodgers lineup is deep. Phillies lineup is deep. Okay, Yankees lineup on paper is deep, but we have guys that are not producing. Okay, and I've always communicated my preference for third base. It's trading, but try and trade for. Colorado Rockies third baseman, Brian McMahon, okay? He's younger. He's a defensive stud, and he puts the ball in play. He's a producing player, okay? And the fact is he's got a couple of controllable years left in his contract, which would make it easy to transition to a guy like Roderick Arias or George Lombard if those guys keep progressing. And if they don't, maybe you keep Brian McMahon around a little bit longer. He seems to be like a perfect fit for the Yankees, in my opinion. Okay, but again, you let me know what your thoughts are. I'm I'm a hard pass on Alex Bregman and Mac Chapman. No, no. So, and they're both Boris clients too. As is Pete Alonso for first base. As is Corbin Burns. As is Juan Soto. So, you know, I, I'd rather just deal with one Scott Boris client, Juan Soto, and he's priority number one, obviously. But how can the Yankees make it better now? And again, this is what the trade deadline is for. The Yankees, you know. Reevaluate. They should be doing it. Hopefully, they're doing it right now. To reevaluating themselves, right, and saying, "Okay, this is where we're deficient." And I haven't even gotten to the bullpen yet. Okay, this is where we're deficient. This is where we could be strategically better. Who can we target? Who's available, and so on and so forth. It the trade deadline allows you to be strategic and say, "Okay, what do we need to get the Orioles to get past the Orioles? What do we need to get past the Phillies if we play them? If we get to the World Series, what do we need to get past the Dodgers?" Okay, I don't think the Red Sox are going to make it to the playoffs, but you never know. I'm not ruling them out. But they are a fast, speedy, athletic team. They did that to the Yankees. They proved that. They also beat up on the Phillies two games out of three, as well as the Yankees. So they've proven they can step up and play the top teams as an upstart. Okay, They're kind of rebuilding, getting young, getting athletic, and so on. I, they'll be formidable in a year or two, I, I have no doubt. So but as of right now, being strategic at the deadline is going to be an important thing for the Yankees. And if they can get, let's just say a Ryan McMahon, and they can get this kid Julian, and just say TJ Rumfield at first base, would you be happy with that? Okay, and then moving over to the bullpen, obviously we have a couple guys that can be expendable. I didn't think Mike Tonkin would be this good, but he's, he's phenomenal. Right now. So, but you have guys like uh, Caleb Ferguson could be expendable. Right. Another guy here and there. Victor Gonzalez, he's got two more years of control after this year. So I'm not sure if they're going to move him. But a good lefty to neutralize, especially fast teams, make it harder for them to steal on the Yankees. Like the Red Sox did yesterday, stole nine bases on the Yankees. Okay. And that's a combination of pitching and catching and poor infield defense. So, and the readiness not being there. Maybe they don't feel comfortable enough to have a, a good chemistry from catcher to second base. I, we don't know. But the fact is we need to get better defensively at second base no matter what. Okay, but back to the bullpen. Garrett Crochet's my guy, and he's the guy I think the Yankees should target. He's going to cost a lot. There are other lefties available that the Yankees could probably get who wouldn't cost as much. But I do think the Yankees are going to add one righty and one lefty. The righty could be a call-up, a guy like Clayton Beater. Could be a strikeout guy from the right-handed side to compliment an expensive guy like Crochet. Or if they got A.J. Puck from the Marlins or Andrew Nardi or Tanner Scott, like some of these other guys. We've mentioned all these guys for like the last bunch of weeks. Okay, Ryan Helsley from the Cardinals. There's so many guys that could be available. Michael Kopech's another one, a right-handed strikeout guy. So could they do a, pack, a, a double 
double whammy. If the White Sox are going to unload, could you get Crochet and Kopech in the same trade? That would cost a lot. Whether the Yankees are willing to fork up the package, we have no idea. But uh, there's some team that's going to put up a put up a big package for Kopech and Crochet. That's going to happen. Just like they're going to put out a big package for Luis Robert and so on. So, um, but back to the yeah, dugout again. This is where the Yankees can be strategic. Okay, these are the relievers that we need. We need another crafty lefty. Okay, because when Garrett Cole comes back, we don't know what's going to happen. Are they going to move Hill to the bullpen? Bullpen? Are they going to move? You know, if they move Hill to the bullpen, then maybe they don't need another righty arm like a Kopech or a Hill. Hill could be the guy. We just don't know what they're going to do yet. We've heard that Hill's not on a living innings limit, but I have a feeling he might be. But again, I don't work for them. Can't prove that. So. And it would make sense to put him on some type of innings limit because he's coming back from TJ. Last thing we want to do is hurt him again. So, but right now, trade deadline, first base, second base, third base, bullpen. The Yankees need to clean up and fortify these areas. There's no doubt about it, okay? And we'll see what Brian Cashman and Hal can do here. There will be guys that they can get. Quantity versus quality, we don't know what's going to be. The deadline... Who's available is going to be different in a couple weeks. So Yankees' needs might be different in a couple weeks. They also might get a resurrection from DJ and Torres. Like, you never know. You never know. Do I expect it? No. Which is why I think the Yankees should be proactive, like they were in the offseason, and getting some of the guys here sooner than later and not waiting till the deadline so other teams can leapfrog them like they do almost every year at the deadline. So give me your thoughts, gang. How would you approach this? What are their biggest needs? All right. Let's talk about it. Have a great day. If anything else comes out, they're off today. If anything else comes out, you're going to get it here. Peace.